Hello, and welcome to ASML's Q1 2025 results. Welcome, Christophe. Welcome, Roger. Roger, if I can start with you, can you provide us an overview of Q1 2025 results? Sure. Total net sales came in at 7.7 billion euros, uh, included in there 2 billion for install base uh, business, the 7.7 within, uh, within guidance. Uh, gross margin came in a little bit better than, uh, than guidance at 54%. Uh, Main reasons uh, why it was a bit better, uh, actually two. One, ASP for EUV was, was higher. Uh, as a result of a uh, uh, more uh, more 3800s versus uh, 3600s in the mix than we anticipated, and also because the configuration uh, of the EUV tools was a bit richer than we uh, than we uh, than we anticipated. Second main reason is that um, we hit some uh, customer specific performance targets for the for the quarter, and uh, we got rewarded for for that. Net income for the quarter came in at 2.4 billion euros uh, and the order intake uh, was 3.9 billion of orders for the quarter, included in there 1.2 billion for EUV. Christoph, if I can turn to you and ask you if you can give us a, uh, some insights on how you're looking at the full year 2025 in terms of the market. Well, I think the dynamic is very similar to what we discussed uh, last quarter. Uh, AI is still the driver of the market. The demand is strong. It remains strong. And we see two scenarios. If the demand on AI continues to be strong and our customers are capable to add capacity, so we have basically opportunity for an upside, looking at the upper range of our uh, guidance, the 35 billion euro. On the other hand, we still see some uh, uncertainty with some of our customers that could also you know, take us to the lower hand of the guidance, mm -hmm. the 30 billion euro. But overall, same dynamic. Then can you share some more insights on how you're looking at the different segments, you know, logic, memory, and install base through 2025? Yeah, so we still see logic uh, increasing. I think it's very strong, especially because of advanced logic. We've been talking about two nanometer for uh, a long time. This is now happening and customers are ramping their very advanced logic node. For memory, we think memory will remain strong, same level as last year, and this is also being confirmed by uh, the activity of our customer. Uh, when it comes to the install base, our install base is growing. Uh, we see a stronger mix of uh, EUV versus DPUV, and this is also leading to some growth uh, in the install base in 2025. And then how do you see the dynamics around tariffs playing a role in, in, in the markets? Well, I think the whole dynamic is still very new. And I think the one thing I like to say, which is being shared by many experts, many businesses, is that this dynamic is creating a new uncertainty, especially when it comes to GDP, so micro level, and indirectly, of course, our potential uh, market demand. So this is a dynamic I think we have to uh, watch uh, very carefully. Now, this being said, uh, where we are today, uh, we still see basically our uh, revenue range for 2025 being between uh, basically 30 and 35 billion euro. Then maybe if we switch to technology, how are we making progress in terms of supporting our customers and their requirements? Maybe first with uh, Loane? Well, let me start maybe with uh, EUV in general, because you know that Loane, INA, are going to be combined at some point by our customer in order, in order to optimize basically their uh, technology, their product roadmap, and also their cost. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we make progress on both platforms. When it comes to LONA, I think some uh, great uh, achievement this quarter. Uh, we have uh, upgraded our first system in the field to the final specification, 220 wafer per hour. As Roger was mentioning that this starts to have a positive impact basically on our margin in Q1. Uh, good adoption from our customer. They are all shifting basically to this uh, platform and we really expect that the 3800 is going to become on the very, very short term the main tool for low mm. Now this is very important. We talked a lot about uh, lethal intensity, about cost of technology in our capital market day. And the progress on productivity basically allow us to execute with our customer on cost of technology. And as a result, we start to see the opportunity to have more EUV single expose adoption, uh, of course, at the expense of multi-patterning. This is great for our customer because it helps with cycle time, simplification, yield. And of course, for SML, this means that this little intensity, especially for DRAM now, is uh, continuing to increase. And then 
Looking at high NA, uh, we recently had a SPIE conference back in February. Can you share some of the results that uh, came from that conference? Yes, yeah, so I think SPIE was a, a very good uh, event because we saw our customer being very eager to share basically their uh, results on high NA. Uh, a few uh, strong examples, I think uh, Intel was explaining that they had exposed more than 30,000 wafer on their tool. They also pointed very strongly to the fact that INA could help them simplify their process. And they mentioned one layer where they could reduce basically the number of process step from 40 to 10, which of course helps with uh, cycle time, yield, and process complexity. Samsung also on the same topic said that INA could reduce their cycle time, in fact, by 60%. So we start to see basically so some of the value of INA being recognized, being measured in some way by our customer, which is very, very uh, encouraging. Now on top of that, uh, we have now shipped all our uh, EXE 5000, and three of our customers have this tool either installed or under installation. So we also continue to expect basically a lot more data, a lot more learning on INA in the coming weeks. Maybe back to you, uh, Roger, if you can maybe follow up on uh, Christoph's comments around tariffs, how do you see that uh, potentially impacting uh, 2025 for ASML? I think Christoph said, it's, first of all, it's a very dynamic field that, uh, that, uh, that, we're, that we're operating in as, uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to tariffs. And maybe you know, it would be good to, to have a bit of a breakdown where it could potentially uh, affect, uh, affect the, uh, the ecosystem. So first of all, obviously, you have tariffs that could be uh, imposed on uh, shipments uh, of entire systems, uh, new systems into the United States. So that, that's one category. The second category would be tariffs imposed on parts and tools that you use for field operations in the United States. The third category uh, could be on what we import into, in the, into the United States for manufacturing in the U.S. As you know, we have some, uh, some manufacturing uh, capability in the U.S., so anything related to that, that would be the third category. And the fourth could be, you know, any other uh, uh, country imposing tariffs on things that are being shipped from the United States into those, uh, into those countries. So those are the, the different, I would say, direct implications of, of tariffs. We're very actively working with the entire ecosystem to try, to try and minimize the overall impact on the whole ecosystem as a result of that. You know, once, once we have better understanding of how exactly it all, it all works. But clearly, our intent is that uh, the impact that it, uh, that it uh, should have on, uh, on our uh, financials should be as limited as, uh, as possible. Then, of course, you have the indirect uh, effect. And this is you know, uh, what, uh, what Christoph also talked about. So to what extent will it have an impact on global GDP? Um, uh, to what extent will it have an impact on, on end market total, uh, total market demand? And I think it's way too early to, to discuss that, and, and therefore it's, it's quite impossible actually to put a, to put a number uh, to put a number on that. Having said all that, how do you look at Q2 in terms of uh, a guidance? Can you provide some detail there? Yeah. So uh, when it comes to uh, to revenue, we expect uh, we expect revenue between 7.2 and 7.7 billion uh, billion euros for uh, for Q2. Uh, again, approximately two billion for uh, installed base for the installed base business. Um, gross margin, we expect somewhere between 50 and 53 percent. That is a wider uh, bandwidth than we typically apply, but that really is, you know, as a result of the uncertainty when it comes to, to tariffs. So both, you know, what is, it, what, what is the tariff uh, situation and also how does it get allocated? Of course, short term, there are some uncertainties there. So that's why we, why we chose to have a, a, a wider bandwidth for gross margin this quarter. And then with that in mind, how are you looking at the whole year from a gross margin point of view? Yes, yeah, so first quarter 54%, second quarter, as I just said, between 50 and, and 53%. We do expect the second half of, of, the, uh, of, of, the, of the year, uh, sec uh, second half year, to be a little bit lower in terms of uh, gross margin. Uh, there's a number of reasons for, for, for that. As, as you know, uh, and Christophe talked about it, uh, about the high-NA uh, uh, high systems that were in the process of, uh, of shipping. We do expect the second half to be stronger when it comes to revenue recognition than the first half. And as you know, high NA is still uh, margin dilutive. So, so therefore, we expect a, a negative impact on the, on the gross margin in the second half as a result of that in comparison to the first, uh, to the first half. We also expect a little bit less uh, upgrade business in the, in the second half in comparison to the, uh, to the first half. And also, you know, as we just said, uh, you know, we have the uncertainty when it comes to, to tariffs. If you take it all together, uh, 
again with the caveat of the uh, of the uncertainty around tariffs that that we need to need to mention we continue to expect a gross margin between 51 and 53 percent for the whole year then switching uh to share buyback so that we ended the year 2024 with a lot of uh, cash we executed uh, some share buyback in q1 uh, so can you provide a little bit more detail on the, the plans around uh, returning cash to shareholders for the rest of the year? So indeed, strong uh, share buyback in, uh, in the first quarter. 2.7 billion euros worth of, uh, of shares were bought back in, uh, in Q1. Um, when it comes to, to dividends, uh, we, we uh, paid an interim dividend in the first quarter of 1.52 euros per ordinary share. Our proposal to the AGM uh, is to pay a final dividend of 1.84 euros per ordinary share. If you combine that all, that would get you to 6.40 euros per ordinary share as the total dividend over the year 2024. Christoph, then maybe one last question is if you can give us a little bit of a forward-looking view on how you see the market, uh, etc., uh, beyond 2025. Well, I think, as I said, so first, AI has been uh, very strong and has driven the industry in the last few quarters. Uh, we still see a lot of strengths in AI. In fact, some of the demand for this year, of course, but also for next year has solidified. So that's very uh, encouraging. Now, if we add to that, the discussion with our customer points to 2025 and 2026 to be both a gross year, as we explained in a previous uh, discussion. Now, of course, Roger uh, went into the details. There's this new uncertainty around tariff. And like many experts, many businesses are explaining, this is, of course, something that we don't know how to quantify yet. But this is adding definitely uncertainty on the long term. Now, if we look at uh, the market itself, we expect a shift towards more advanced technology. This is true for logic. Uh, this is true for DRAM. And as we explain in capital market day, these are basically technologies that will require more advanced lithography. I also explain, it's very, very important, that the progress we have made on the 3800 and INA bring uh, our customer the technology they need to switch more and more layer from multi-patterning to single exposed UV. And this is, of course, a good thing when it comes to uh, litho intensity. With all of that, Jim, so we feel that uh, we are making a very good step towards our uh, guidance given at the Capital Market Day in November for 2030 with a range of revenue between 44 and 60 million euro and a gross margin range between 56 and 60 percent. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Christophe. And with that, I'd like to remind you all that we will host our annual general meeting on April 23rd. And I hope to see all our shareholders there.